Alright, welcome back to another Kumasao review. This is TJ Duckett, and what we're reviewing today is the Bandai Tamashi Super Robot Shigoken Gurren Lagan action figure. Lots of fans of this anime series, so this is a pretty highly anticipated one. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started with what's in the box. On the front side, pretty standard. It reminds me a lot of the Gal Gagar box, to be honest with you. But, taking a look, it's got him... A bit of lens flare there, um, as well as some kanji and stuff like that. On the top, black and white, a bit of embossing to the picture, as well as Gurren Lagan, Super Rob Robot Chikokin. Okay. Same difference there. Okay, picture of him on the side, kind of a side view. Alright, this is actually kind of the bottom of the box for this one all that information. Back of the box, okay? Different faces here. Looks like he comes with three, or, well, I've already taken them out, so I can tell you he comes with three as well as him using the shade blades, okay? Just looking at some of the options here. Um, these two pieces are removable. Well, both arms are removable for the additional drill set, which is sold separately. I'll be reviewing that too, right after this review. But a uh, picture of him and this trademark, who the hell do you think I am pose? Last part of the box is the bottom. Looks like the same picture as up top, except in color. Alright, let's go ahead and get into this figure, um, because I know you guys are ready. Alright, and now we get to take a look at the figure itself. Okay? Um, you can see, in terms of just the sculpt, it is a good likeness to Gurren Lagann, but off the bat, and this was realized by people even before um, the figure had come out just from promotional pictures and stuff like that, the waist to hip ratio here is insanely, insanely um, just wacky. <laughs> um, he definitely had that anime manga type body with the little bit wider hips and stuff like that bigger arms but I mean this is almost I guess womanly hourglass baby making quote unquote thick hips like it's kinda it, well it's ridiculous I'm not the biggest fan of that aesthetic change um, as well as the humongous knee pads like I just don't get it but taking a look at the figure overall Get you a side view here. All right. Still turn them around. You'll notice that they have their own take on the emblems. In fact, I don't think I've seen really two toy producers make the emblems on the shoulders the same. Just something random I've noticed. I don't know. I really don't know what's up with that. Okay. One place that this really does shine, though, is the face. Um, as an owner of the Ryobot version as well, get focused here. This has to be the best face I've seen on a Gurren Lagann action figure. Um, the only one I haven't had a chance to mess with is the Great Impact Gurren Lagann, and I know that one's a very high-end version, but this one's pretty damn nice. Not gonna lie, I'm just taking a look at it. So, all right. Before we even get into the um, articulation, I do want to go over some of the features here. All right, the shoulder pads are on ball joints, like so. But they have the ability to kind of slide up and down and things like that. Did you guys see that? Let's split up. And down because that's on a whole nother pivot of its own as well as these complementing I guess you want to call them shoulder flaps here break up that space in between you know his neck and his shoulders all right outside of that um, the skirts are movable as well as this front crotch plate all right the back one is not And this back piece is removable here 
for the sake of his backpack. Okay, so looking at the posability of the figure itself, his head's definitely on a ball joint. And that's because of a tight joint, not a loose peg right there. And that piece is actually meant to come off to exchange his faces. But it heads on a ball joint, so he's got a range of movement there. There's another, um, I don't know if it's a ball joint or a pivot, but where his neck meets his chest. But that definitely can move back and forth to give him some extended hyper movement there. Okay. Take a look at that. I'm just making sure I'm still in focus for a second. Okay. All right. So shoulders definitely on ball joints. He doesn't have bicep swivel, but he does have swivel right at these elbow joints where the elbow meets that. Um, that actually pegs in, but the thing is it's kind of hard to move that because it's in so tight. Like it's ridiculous. You almost have to partially pull it out and then peg it back in after you swivel it. Alright, so double jointed elbows there's the elbow joint itself on that ball joint there but then there's another elbow section right here to give it that you know I guess Tamashi standard full bend full bend up there okay ball joints at the wrist okay so you do have a lot of movement there as well as side to side <coughs> All right. Now, taking a look at the waist. Waist is definitely kind of funky. Um, this mouth definitely does move here. Okay, You don't really have moving gears or anything crazy like that. Okay, He has the ability to bend up here, bend up and down. Okay, He's not like some of the super like Robot Wars robots and stuff like that to where this part can kind of extend up. It just is what it is. It's just an up and down pivot. Okay? And it's nice because the mouth can move up and down to fill that space if there is one. So like let's say we move it up like so. Alright? The mouth can fill it in. So Still really, really bad ways to hip ratio, but I guess that kind of is what it is. Um, definite swivel where the waist um, meets the crotch. Okay, Like I said, these are removable, but for the sake of the review and to show why it's that wide, I'm going to take these off. They're just ball joints, so don't worry about it. Okay, So you can see here, even I guess naked hips, it's just plain built. It's not like these are wide or anything like that or made funky. No, this toy is actually designed to have hips that are that wide in proportion to his waist. It's just really, really goofy. Alright, but definite ball jointed hips here, die cast even. So really strong joints and stuff like that. Um, there's definitely thigh swivel. Okay, the knees double ball jointed here all right and these knee pads obnoxiously huge um, unfortunately the knee pads don't swivel up and down or anything like that to cover that area so when you bend them at the knee it just plain shows his under area there okay all right there's more swivel at the knee but realistically I'm I would only use the thigh swivel because Nobody's double jointed like that. People just don't work that way. Um, all right. So as I pop that off, the ankles themselves are on ball joints. Okay. So looking at the feet and whatnot, there's no crazy articulation or anything like that in terms of the feet. Um, I don't believe that I'm missing anything. He does have forward and back movement, side to side, um, but looking at this, it looks like there's a, let me zoom in here some, it looks like there's like a swivel for the feet to be able to move separately, or the feet to be, front foot to be able to move separately from the heel, but it doesn't, it doesn't pull apart or anything like that, and as you can see right there, it's definitely on a slate, but moving around 
There's a little bit of motion there, so I did get some rock, and maybe that's it. It goes slightly forward and slightly backwards, but it's as a whole. So, that's just for the whole thing to move back and forth, it looks like. Oh, okay, I get it. So, the whole thing can move back and forth. The foot, to give it some more posability there, let me zoom out. You can see here. But, so that it doesn't look so disjointed, this back part actually slides up some. And this is full die cast down here, that's why it's a little bit rough, but yeah, that's neat. Zoom out so you can actually see it. It's actually really cool. It's one of the best feet setups I've actually ever seen. So, yeah. Kudos for that. But overall, um, there's the aesthetic of them. You kind of either like it or you don't. It's more of a stylized version of Gurren Lagann than maybe the Ryobot or the Great Impact version. Just getting those back on here. See, they pack really easy. But yeah, let me go ahead and get everything looking right again. So that I'm not leaving this section on a poop note. But yeah, there's that. And that's the overview of the figure itself. Now, it does come with some decent accessories and stuff like that. And I'm going to take a look at them right now. Alright, taking a look at his accessories here. Um, first thing you're going to notice is the wing pack. Alright. And this is pretty neat in itself. It's definitely got some posability to it. Let me zoom out some. In terms of, you know, each section of the wing being able to move in and out. No up and down movement or anything like that. But, show sure, accurately, it really didn't move up and down. Huh? Alright. So there's that. Two of his sunglass blades. All right. He comes with two alternate faces. Get the camera zoomed in here. All right. As you can see, one's got an open mouth yelling, one's um, gritting. And we can still look at the rest of this while we're zoomed in. All right. He comes with four drills. And he has a ton of drill ports on them, but since there are four, they're really meant to be used in the drill ports that are, you know, on the sides of his forearm here, inside and out. But you can see, even in this section, all of these holes are drill ports, and that's where that full drillized um, extra set comes in, alright? So, when using the sunglass blades here... That's because the sunglass come off of, you know, <coughs> Gurren there. And you replace the sunglass, the brow area of his torso, with this. Alright, some extra hands here to round it out. Fist with open areas to be able to hold these uh, shade blades. Open hands. As well as pointer fingers, you know, for that... Oh, so well known, who do you think you are, finger in the air stance, just like on the box at the beginning of the video. Alright, so now that we've taken a look at this success set of accessories, let's do something with them. And, before I forget, he does come with a clip that goes underneath his crotch there. That's actually a separate piece, but since you can't see it from the front, I just keep it on all the time. That lets him attach to a Tamashi stand for those flight poses, like we're about to put him in now. So, remember how I said that back piece comes off? It just comes off like so. It actually pegs in very tightly, but, you know, also comes off very easily if you have fingernails. Okay, so you can kind of see how this goes. Those four peg areas there in the back here, and it also has a clip in the middle. And it just pops on. Easy as pie. Okay? Now, these drills on the wing pack aren't removable, which makes sense because they were never off the wing pack in the show. Alright? So there's that. Let's go ahead and. I'm going to give him. An open hand. These hands, they're just, you know, miniature ball joints there. 
But the hands are kind of a son of a beasting to go ahead and peg on and off. The holes that the ball joints peg into are just really small and they're really far into the hand so you really have to press it on just right because if not the hand or that ball joint since it's a big ball joint on the back it'll want to rotate away from you and stuff like that now popping these on all right, let me see how close I can get all right you'll see the shape even though it looks like a peg it kind of like flares out at the end that lets it like pop and then lock into place. So, sometimes you can actually hear them. But, slide that in there. And see, it's nice and tight. Like, you can pull the figure once it's on. Okay? And also, about these drills, they are made of a softer plastic. So, don't worry about, I know, like, the Revel Tech ones especially. I definitely drew blood messing around with the full drillized version of that. But, no, soft plastic. Not so soft that they're just going to bend and lose mold or whatever um, at the slightest touch, but they are not going to hurt you or anything like that. Um, if you have children, don't be worried at all. So this one, since it's its right hand, I'll go ahead and change that out then for the... Hmm, I'll do the open hand here. See what I mean? that ball joint definitely just slid away from me and it's hard because you can't see in there All right? and boom I went ahead and popped the wrong hand on but okay there we go alright so there's that um even that's not a bad pose I don't know why um Go ahead, and it's got a good grip on him. You can tell even by looking at the hands. Alright, so now he has a weapon in hand. But, let's go ahead and exchange out these faces, just so you can see how they go on and off. First, you start by popping the crust off. That he oh so coolly took from Inky in the anime. Um, then, the face just kind of... Take your fingernail and pop it out from underneath. They do sit in there kind of tight. So for this review, I'm actually going to just take it off because it makes it easier to slide the head out. Okay. And the new face, I'm actually going to do the yelling face. See how he has the two holes in there? This face, this is the back of the face, it has the equivalent in how it pegs in. So you just peg the face back in there, okay, I'm going to get it back on the ball joint. This is actually the first time I've unpegged the head. That went on a lot easier than those hands do, thank God. Alright, and pop the crest back on. Of course my hand is overshadowing it and okay there's that all right and the peg itself that goes underneath them that I showed you guys it's really well balanced so it'd be really hard I'm using a Tamashi Act 5 stage to hold them up yeah this one would be like really hard to I guess biff in terms of Closing them out, but raise an arm there. Actually, turn his hand out. Okay, so we're getting there. We're working with something. All right, he's about to throw it. So he's ready. He's angry. He's ang. He's aiming. All right. There's that. And of course. They had a little bit of realism to them. Yeah. And these do, when raising the legs up, these pop out a little bit too easy for my taste. I think they could have been engineered a lot better. And unfortunately, a lot of that is attributed to the fact that those ball joints are shaped like they are. There's just no room to move the leg around 
and really have these things, the thigh pads, stay on. See what I mean? They're, even when the legs are down, they're just kind of tight in there. But, alright, I'll cheat a little bit. Alright. There's that. Zoom out some. And boom. There are his accessories. Pretty cool. It's a good amount of stuff that comes with them. Pretty standard, but still cool and well done. Um, and you see what I mean now with that area showing the knee? That just looks really bad, you know? I almost wonder what's the point of having these huge knee pads if they can't be moved up to cover that business up. But all right, let's go ahead and get to some final thoughts. All right, and final thoughts on the Super Robot Chogokin um, Gurren Lagann action figure by Bandai's Tamashi. <coughs> Tamashi toy section. This toy for what you get, I mean, I believe the figure was around $40 or so, or retails for around that price. It, it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Um, unfortunately, there have just been some nicer toys like the Ryobot that have been released around a similar price and this toy even if it even without the detailing and stuff like that that the Ryobot version has um, you know I can let that slide in the sense that it's still a fun toy but things like the hip area um, aesthetically displeasing and stuff like that or not, that that's really doesn't bother me as much as the fact that it actually limits the mobility of his legs and makes the um, hip skirts pop off. You know, that really bugs me out. Things like the knee pads not being able to work well with um, his actual knees themselves. That's not just an oversight, that's a move that almost comes off like, you know, the designers of this just didn't care and it's odd because they're known for making toys that are just dead on dead on accurate so for what it's worth it's definitely like a good buy for the Gurren Lagann fans, Super Robot, Chagokin collectors you know and fans of decent toys in general the main reason that I'd say getting this as opposed to just running and buying the Rybot as soon as you can is the fact that it does come with the or not come with um, come with the option for the full drill I set which in my next review you're gonna see that it adds quite a bit to this figure like immensely but anyways this has been TJ Duckett with another Kuma style review once again this is Bandai Tamashi's um, Super Robot Chigokin Gurren Lagann action figure you know, hopefully this has been a well enough overview for you guys to decide whether or not you want to purchase it and make your own decision. And I'm definitely open to your, you know, questions about the toy and your comments as well when you guys get them in hand. But anyway, once again, this is TJ Duckett. Check out the um, pictorial and written review on this uh, figure on my website, kumastyle.com, to get a little bit more insight as well as see some actual pictures and stuff like that. But anyway, see you guys next review and thanks for watching.